Hey everybody, thanks so much for stopping by and happy Sunday. Uh, so today I want to answer two questions. Uh, the first one is why don't we just get a bunch of new materials and the other is just charge a bunch more and assume that the magnet cut is going to be half bad. So today I just wanted to explain my issue with those things. Uh, first and foremost, I uh, we're small business, so we don't have a monstrous budget. We don't have the same margins as a lot of other larger companies. We put a lot more time and effort into our knives to make something of high quality for a fair price. Usually that's fine. Uh, all the stuff maths out and it's been working great with the Bowler Udahome stuff. But uh, looking at these materials in this sheet format, on the domestic side, these are like 20 to $26 a pound, depending on where I'm sourcing it from and what the grade is. Uh, the higher alloy stainlesses are more expensive and some of the lower alloy stuff is a little bit less expensive. Uh, it's all expensive these days though. Across the pond, the European grades, looking at M390 and LMAX, uh, those are up in the neighborhood of 30 plus dollars a pound. You'll notice that I don't charge more for that. Uh, these run very efficiently and I'm fine with that price. It ends up being a couple of dollars a knife difference and I'm happy to eat that because it's very efficient and I don't really believe in charging a bunch of different prices for G10s, canvases, the different steels. It's just, no, that's not why I got into this. Uh, but looking at this, in that 30 or so dollars a pound, uh, this is M390, so this was very expensive. Uh, so we nest very, very efficiently here outside of the clamping location uh, where we have to keep the sheet still or these are gonna flutter around a lot. We have to cut this very carefully and in a particular order to make this work really well. Um, so here, this is still all 30 plus dollar a pound waste. And then we surface grind the knives away, which removes more of that material. So we have to amortize that over all the knives we can nest out of the sheet of material to know what our rough blank cost is. The issue happens when we start having voids and inclusions and things like that, where I'm losing a percent of those to loss and now factory seconds, where I'm losing profitability those per part costs get a lot higher really fast, which hurts our mobility. All right, we still have overhead. We bought all this equipment and stuff to be able to do the job. And unfortunately I haven't won the lottery yet and I'm not independently wealthy. So we have to work within the constraints of what we can do. So where we can't just buy a bunch more material is it's insanely expensive up front, And I can't eat all of that loss because we don't have the margin and then just buy all new material. Uh, we just don't operate that way because of what we're trying to accomplish and provide for you guys. So what we did instead was redirect it and made a bunch of EDC-4s in materials that I know are really nice. Now we're working on EDC-5s, EDC-3s, these different things where I know we have predictable income and I know what our costs are so that I can finish out some of the CPM stuff. At this point, I, I know their position, so we're just pretty much done with that. If I have to order a couple more sheets here and there to fulfill some orders, where people just want it, I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it hesitantly, and we're gonna show you everything that happens along the way with those materials. If it goes great, awesome. If it doesn't, we're gonna know. But I just wanted to explain that, where we're still a small business of five people. At the end of the day, we're a small business. We project large because we are pretty effective in here. We get a lot of units out. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way from these different high-end companies that I've interacted with, and we do a good job. Uh, you guys getting your stuff, you see it. So that answers that question, I think. But the other thing is when we look at, you know, just charge more and assuming there's gonna be more loss. One, I don't know batch to batch how much loss there's gonna be. And two, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I'm essentially punishing you guys for the bad actions of the company rolling the deficient materials. So I'm incentivizing them to continue doing the same damn thing while punishing you as the customer so that I can absorb these and still maintain a viable business. That's dicked up. I, I'm just, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna maintain transparency here as we're finishing these things out and just see what their position are. You know, I'm, I'm just gonna start getting loud about it and I don't feel bad about it. They've had a long time to make this right or at least acknowledge that there are issues. They haven't, so they seem okay with it. So we're just gonna show you what's going on. So thankfully, uh, I think I'm done with this now. We're getting the backlog done. I'm tired of talking about this. I just wanna move on to other things and do a good job. Uh, honestly, I just wanna be outside, but we're doing this now and we're doing a good job. So I'm gonna keep doing it. But uh, 
I hope that explains that and uh, where my position is on that. So that's where we have lots of this, you know, short delivery window or soon to be in stock stuff in these EDC series and the different things in the Bowler Udahome materials. That's gonna allow us to get our momentum back in the face of some of these struggles to get some of those projects back on track, get the she setups done, get she's here for some of these projects that are at the end of production and just get this back on a good momentum. But the money has to come from somewhere. I'm not the Federal Reserve. I can't just print new money and pray it all away. So I hope you guys can understand. We're here every day on day doing the best job possible to correct this as quickly as possible. Um, if I weren't gonna follow through with this, I would have quit a long time ago. You know, it's, people forget that was always on the table. That's just not how we're built. You know, my grandmother didn't raise a quitter. So we're gonna keep after this, we're fixing it. We've just about got the backlog done. Uh, I'm gonna be really happy as soon as we get these big knives done. But, uh, you know, I guess that's about it. I'm gonna get this scrap stuff ready here, but uh, thanks for stopping by and lending me your ear for a second. I hope things make a little more sense just talking about it more. Uh, if you guys have any other follow-up questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, just as I see stuff, I'm happy to make more content. So, uh, you know, drop comments and then just stop back often and uh, I'll probably answer your question. So, uh, goodbye for now, but we'll talk to you again soon.